rod was bouncing around on the inside of there. So after kept playing with it, the initial magnetic field actually started dropping in intensity. And then it started uh, picking up its own magnetic field. And the more I play with it, the better, the better it is. See, I'm I'm about 10, 15 feet away from the reactor, and uh, the needle is pointing towards north, so I'm a little bit off on the way I'm pointing it. <coughs> This thing's touchy. It's one of them cheap, five dollar ones you get at Walmart, but I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I'm no expert at this stuff. I don't. I wish I could meet somebody that is. But you know, everybody knows the information on these suckers is a little bit touch and go. Because most. Uh, but I'm trying to figure it out as I go. Eventually, I'll figure out all the secrets to it. I think that's a glare. But I'll post another video when this thing cools down. I'll take the rod out of it. And I'll post another video to show you the markings on the rod. A little bit. A little bit of swirl patterns, but not really a swirl. It's more like just like little lines, little clean spots, and then some of the metal's a little darker than the rest of it. You know? <clears throat> I first started out with this piece of crap motor right here. I could hardly get anything done with it. I mean, I could even keep damn thing running with its own carburetor. <laughs>
start to get the air fuel ratio just right on this damn thing. I didn't have any luck hardly at all with the bubbler. You know, everybody has that problem where it'll run real good for about, I don't know, it depends how much gas you got in it, but it'll run real good for a little while, and then it burns off the uh, lighter fraction, evaporates out, and then you're left with a bunch of unusable crap that barely even light on fire. And, uh, <clears throat> but the carburetor seems like a lot better idea. If I could find me uh, some type of compression fitting, put a Y, maybe I could put two of the carburetors together. But it's so sensitive to the uh, vacuum uh, decrease. If there's a vacuum, you know, if I lose a little bit of vacuum, it really cuts down on it. You know, so I can't even open up that throttle very big. I mean, I'm talking about like eighth of an inch. You know, from idle to uh, high RPM. I'm going to try to idle it down. I don't want to take it down any farther than that right now. Because it, they don't seem to really like it. But it's still running fairly smooth. Now <laughs> yeah, the motor's not even broken in yet, so maybe they'll break in together. <laughs> Pretty warm. Might not, but I don't want to really want to touch it too much. But. That's the reflection. That's all convex uh, lens. That it's so far away on the inside of there, I wouldn't be able to tell if it was there. It's starting to rain a little bit. <coughs> Just trying to let it run as long as I can because a lot of people, you know, make real short videos. You know, but I'm able to take a half hour video on here if I want. And uh, so I'm trying to keep it going as long as I can unless it starts raining. Another little thing I was experimenting around with, and uh, I don't know if you guys can see that little screw with the little spring. It's out of focus. But uh, I, I was trying to make a homemade little vacuum valve, but this thing was so touchy it didn't really want to work. And uh, well, it's just something I was trying to do. It works a little bit, but it got to be very fine.